and welcome to the start of new room vlog. <laughs> it is nine o'clock Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday night. What is time? Who knows her? And we're actually, I washed my hair and it's doing like really weird things. So you, I apologize for the lighting. It's nine o'clock at night. Anyway, <laughs> let me just put you, no. I need to put you down. I can't be bothered getting my tripod because I'm lazy and that requires me getting out of bed. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Okay. I just need you for now. For now, this is going to work. Hey, friends. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to the start of new reading vlog. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the chaos that is my channel. This reading vlog is going to be super exciting because I'm going to be reading some of my most anticipated 2023 releases uh and i've actually started reading one and when this came like when this when i saw that this was on order from the library i reserved it immediately i was like i need to be number one on that rank like i need to be the first one to get this and i did it's lost in the moment and sound by shannon mcguire i've started reading this from my most anticipated it is so fucking gorgeous. I am 90 pages in, and it's quite a small novel. Um, I just started reading just before. It's very fast paced. When I tell you that I started tear- Sorry, I'm making you bounce. <laughs> when I started reading this, as in like the dedication, just the dedication of this novel, Mm. it's gonna kill you mates it's gonna kill you i think that shauna mcguire is doing fabulous things this series has such a huge place in my heart but i'm not going to talk about that because what's the book about so we have antoinette or ansi we are with her when she's a toddler something happens to her dad resulting in something happening in terms of a new person being introduced into the family and it's terrifying really to be antsy as she's like she's like you know at the time around about eight nine years old um after what happened with her dad it kind of like fast forwards and just her terror and her panic and that feeling of like no one's ever gonna believe me not even my mum like it was just so visceral shauna mcguire writes freaking amazingly um and then she f has a door there's a door she opens it and she's in what is it shop of lost something of lost things i just literally forgot it shop where the lost things go i love ansi i'm loving this i just want so badly for there to be like revenge <laughs> i don't think that's going to happen but truly having like such a good time with this book this series as a whole is just <sighs> incredible this series i feel like you could be at any like age read this and get something from it but i think the older you are the more you get from it i do i truly do so i'm going to continue reading lost in the moment of found and i will touch base with you when i finish it I'm really excited for this vlog. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read now. This is the angle we're using today. Um, <laughs> I've been up since two in the morning, just on the toilet. I don't know if I ate something. I don't know if I had like too much dairy because I'm lactose intolerant. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but. I finished reading Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna Maguire and I'm just coming in to tell you that I really loved it and I will provide more of my thoughts in a coherent manner in the next clip but I just want to excuse me the fuck was that I just wanted to let you know that I finished it last night 
and I actually highly recommend reading it in one sitting if possible because it was pretty good. Why is it cold? Like already? Why? We we had like a not even a heat wave of all, but we're having like 30 degree days and now it's freezing. Anyway, hi. <laughs> um I finished Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna Maguire. This honestly has taken me a while to sit down and do this update, but I need a break from what I'm doing. So I thought I would just pop in. I had to return the, the book to the library, which is why I don't have it here with me to show you. But wow. Book eight in the Wayward Children's series uh, by Shauna Maguire did not disappoint at all. I don't think this series could ever disappoint me now. I'm so far into it that every book just brings me joy in a different way. I hope to one day physically own these books because I just want to reread them and annotate them. They're so gorgeous. I think I've already talked about, maybe, uh, how I feel that Shauna Maguire's writing is kind of underrated. It's just not only so beautiful, but so articulate. She's able to, to convey such depth of meaning with very few words. And it takes a real skill. Like, it's truly an experience when you read her. Um, but Lost in the Moment and Found, like all uh, the books of the series, is a portal fantasy. But slightly different to the rest, we have a world that is not necessarily a world, but a nexus. So we actually get confirmation that there's a like kind of like a multiverse happening. Anyway, it's very cool. So we have our main character, Ancy or Antoinette, and she runs away from home after realizing that something terrible is going to happen to her if she was to stay. There's a stepfather involved, that's all I'll say. And she runs and she finds a door the door itself not like it was very it's kind of different to the other doors that we see in this uh series a lot of the doors that we see in in previous books has have been like in the middle of the forest or like on a path through somewhere on their way home but this one was literally a door to an antique store and uh Ancy was like yeah I want to go in because if I go in there'll be a phone and I need to call my grandmother and tell her that um I need to stay with her <laughs> and so Ancy goes into this door and she is not home anymore it is a completely different world there's like a talking crow and there's also this very old woman who you don't necessarily trust like the entire story you kind of feel as though the piano is going to drop on Ancy's head a little bit which is there's a reason for it because it kind of does I really enjoyed Ancy's character the strength of her character especially at the end when when she goes back oh it's just she is one of the most unique characters I think in this series which is saying something like this is in my personal opinion which is saying something considering the characters in this series but I think the last like 50 pages of this story is just it hits you like what she finds out what like what she discovers and how she then realizes that like she can never go home to her mum actually she could but she'd have to wait because of something that I won't say because it's a spoiler but just the strength that she has and then her ability to find things that are lost and then she finds the Eleanor's home for wayward for wayward children and I just think the ending was beautiful but it was bittersweet I really enjoyed it. I gave four stars it's not like one of my all-time favorites from the series but it's definitely one that I think adds a lot to the series because not only Ancy as a character but also like this idea of like a nexus this I this kind of feeling that some of these places might be sentient and there's multiple universes going around and some people know what's happening a lot more than others and it's just very interesting 
And I really, it'd be really fascinating to see how Shauna Maguire decides to conclude the series, or if it's a series that like the main story arcs will finish, and then maybe she'll like branch off and do other ones. But just like, how will she decide to stop? It'd be really interesting to see what she does. Like I know the last book is going to be truly an emotional experience. But yeah, I just wanted to <laughs> to touch base with you. Um, the next book that I would like to read for this vlog, because we're reading my some of the most anticipated of the year, I'm hoping is God Killer by Hannah Kana, because I just got my hold in at the library, so I'm gonna pick that up this week. One book done. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I think I've stopped. I need to stop procrastinating now. So, I'm not wearing any pants, but you can't see that. But I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> I am hot. It's humid. And I put on, I had tracksuit pants on, but I had to go to the chemist. And I was just sweating. Like, I was sweating in the chemist. I honestly feel like I was looking slightly suspicious because I was dripping. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, back to the vlog. Uh, really exciting. Another of my holds for one of my most anticipated releases came in at the library yesterday. So of course, I picked it up and of course I started reading it. Regardless of the fact that I am already in the middle of another book for another reading challenge of mine. But God Killer by Hannah Kana. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm already honestly like halfway through. This is really easy to read, really fast paced. What is it about? Okay, so it's actually told from four different perspectives. We have Kissen, who is a god killer. We have Inara, who is a young noble girl. We have Skerdi, who is the god of white lies, and he is. That's him. He's really cute. He's got little antlers. Um, but I'm pretty sure he can like shapeshift into various animals and but mainly he's like a little mouse slash hair slash he flies anyway uh, and then we have Elo or Elagast 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 who used to be the knight commander for the king but is now a baker and he's precious and he's also suffering from like what we know as PTSD. It is so wonderful. Okay. This is just really fun. This is really fun. Exactly what I needed. Exactly what it says it's going to do. You are dropped into this world and slightly confused with the prologue. But it's essentially like the origin story of Kissin. But it's also the the an, an, a way to understand the the world itself because the king has outlawed the worshipping of all these various gods. And one of the reasons for that is because a lot of these gods kind of went insane with their power and the kind of worship of humans that they started exploiting them and a lot of people died and the war essentially happened as a result but let's not forget that in this war gods actually helped fight the other gods who were bad if that makes sense i'm guessing that's what from that's what i'm understanding from the first half i feel like there's going to be a really huge twist any hoosies so we are in this world so we kind of take place after this war has happened, a few years after this war has happened, and now god killers are not seen as like these terrible assassins. Well, they're still perceived as that because you can't change the cultural <laughs> perceptions um, against a group of people, especially a minority in this world, within two years. But they get paid and they are illegitimate in the eyes of the king, so that kind of helps make things a bit smoother for Kissin and those of her ilk. So Kissin is incredible. Um, I love her. 
she's Viv if Viv wasn't an orc. If you get that Legends and Latte reference, you are my kind of person. Kissen is incredible and she's also queer and I love her so much. And she is just epic in so many ways and she also has quite a wonderful heart but she takes absolutely no shit. She does not care. She does not care. There was this bar scene and I was literally like, oh my god, marry me. Please. Or like, kill me with your blade. Like, I don't know what I want, but I just want to be in your vicinity, right? I love her so much. And then from there we meet uh, Elo, who's this little baker. Not little, but he's a baker. <laughs> and he's a wonderful baker. But then the king, who used to be his friend, and technically still is, but they have a difference of opinion. And the king comes and Elo's like, something's not right, but I'm just going to let him kind of, in his own time, tell me what's going on. The king tells him what's going on and Elo's like, I need to help fix this because regardless of our difference of opinion, I still love you like a brother. So I'm going to go to the place where we had this war and hopefully there's a god there who doesn't hate us, specifically doesn't hate you, king, because you fucked up their lives, uh, and ask for a favour. So that's Elo. Kissin is flirting with the bartender, having the time of her life. This is prior to the bar fight that happens. And this young noble girl comes into the bar because she hears that the god killer is there flirting with the barmaid. And Inara goes there and is like, I need your help. And Kissin's like, go back home, babe. <laughs> but then shit happens. Inara tells her story about the fact that she's bonded to this god of white lies named Skeddy, and Skeddy has no idea how he got to be with Inara. From how it's described from both of their perspectives, Inara was born and so was Skeddy. Skeddy just appeared in her crib one day. And I think from what I understand, no one knew of Skeddy's existence. I think he hid for a lot of her... Oh, was that... Or was it five years ago? She would have been around eight and then she shut up in the bed. It was something along those lines. It was either at birth... I have to reread that section. It was either at birth or like five years ago, he just appeared as like this random naked hair. And um, ever since then, Inara has kept him as a secret. So we have all these things happening. Hunter, what is that? No, stop. Drop it. No, what is this? It's an olive. You're eating an olive. <laughs> we have an olive tree. He grabbed an olive. You've got good taste. We at least know you're Greek. Anyway, so that's all that's happening. They intersect... Uh, on their journey to the place where the war happened, which is Blen Ra Blen Raden, Blen Raden, Blen Raden, and that's where I'm up to. Loving it. We have these things called uh, shadow demons that, from what I understand, are summoned by the gods of the wild or wild gods. Now they're different to the god that you pray to for, like I don't know beauty i think the wild gods are the really ancient ones and then like the other gods are kind of lesser and they're the petty ones the ones that started the trouble i believe and started the war in the first place because they did shit i think that's from what that's my interpretation of what's happening but at the same time i do feel as though we haven't yet received more information about this world because I'm only halfway through this is not even 300 pages and I feel like that in itself might become an issue in terms of the world building in terms of the amount of detail that we're able to get but again at the same time I'm I think this might be a debut novel I've never heard of this author and I think for a debut novel maybe she's just like keeping it pretty safe in terms of not making it too much of an epic fantasy because this very easily could have been 500 pages and honestly, I would have read it if it was 500 pages. I, I just love it so much. I do know it's the first book in a series, and I'm very happy about that because eventually I am going to purchase this. I'm already telling you this right now. 
I think this is wonderful. The way that I'm going to describe it, and bear with me because I don't know if it will make any sense, it's Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne meets Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Don't ask me how that makes sense, but in my mind, it makes sense in terms of the vibes. <laughs> in terms of the vibes. I feel like it's because it's about gods and gods behaving badly. <laughs> and there's like a war with the gods. It reminds me of John Gwynne's Shadow of the Gods, not Hunger of the Gods. Did I say Shadow or Hunger? I meant Shadow of the Gods. Hunger is the second book. But that world, right? And then Legends and Lattes, not because it's cozy fantasy. This is not cozy fantasy. It's high stakes. However, it feels a bit more low key. So it's not cozy, but it's low key. Shit is happening. There is violence. There are, you know, important themes happening. But it feels fun and it's fast paced and it's accessible and it's easy to read. The characters also kind of remind me a little bit of the characters in Legends and Lattes. I mean, Kissin, Viv. The um, Elo is also the little uh, Baker Mouse. What's his name? Timble. Timble. It's just, I just really love the dynamic. Elo and Kissin are both, you know, warriors in their own way. And they're very, they're very, very, very uh, cautious of each other, which is valid. But also just look at like how gorgeous they are. Oh, look at that shark. It is the most gorgeous book. And the stag is the symbol of the god of war, who has, whose symbol has also been taken and used by King Arryn, who is the king of Midrin, Elo's friend, and um, yeah, I wonder, I think the stag is going to come back. I also think the fact that we had a prologue, yes, it's like the origin story of Kissin, and obviously it's, tra it's a tragedy, because they always seem to be tragedies in fantasy, but it, I think, is going to mean that Kissin's past is going to be more of an importance later in the book, maybe even in the series, because I feel like there's unfinished business there, and like there's a reason why the author Hannah Kana was like, yeah, no, we actually do need to spend an entire chapter giving you the reason why Kissin is Kissin, you know? So I, I think that's going to be an important factor in the story as well, we shall see. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of the gods. I'm looking forward to uncovering, hopefully, maybe a bit of the, the secrets and the mystery behind Skeddy because he has no idea. He's just a little baby, honestly. And I'm just really enjoying myself. Like, this is fabulous and I'm, I'm having so much fun and it's exactly what I needed. Uh, and I will, obviously, when I finish this book, I will update you on my thoughts. But right now, it's kind of sitting at a four and a half. Uh, not five yet, because I'm, I've got heaps to go, but I'm loving it. I couldn't stop reading it last night. So this is just fantastic for me. I'm, oh, I love when books are just great. They're just great. It's making me want to get my, into more of my like fantasy reading because I'm looking at my stack of books that I would like to read in the next few months. And not a lot of them are fantasy. I think only. Oh wait, do we consider speculative a branch of fantasy? Because then technically I have three, four. I don't know, but I kind of want to like. It's making me want to read *The Hunger of the Gods*, which is book two in the Blood Swan Saga. It's making me want to continue with my um, *Wheel of Time* reading. Like it's just making me want to get back into meaty fantasy which is a really good feeling anyway um yeah i'll keep you updated with with my thoughts i'm hoping to finish it tonight to be perfectly honest i was supposed to see a friend tonight but i'm pretty sure she has commitments that she forgot which i'm actually kind of excited about because then i can read because i need to finish god killer because it's awesome okay uh yeah have a wonderful day and i will speak to you when i finish God killer.
Hey friends. So I completely forgot what I updated you all on regarding God Killer by Hannah Kana. I loved this. I truly, truly loved this. I gave it four and a half stars. I think it was just so fun and fast paced and interesting with really fascinating characters. I enjoyed the dynamic of all of them. But I do think that the last like 50 pages was a lot. So the entire novel, like for most of the novel, is the journey to Blen Raiden, right? And then when you get to Blen Raiden, everything happens so quickly that you're kind of left reeling a little tiny bit. Uh, I think having a bit more pages would have really benefited this book. It was not even 300 pages, it's 288. Like it's a very short fantasy novel. So I think that was something that did a disservice to the story, but everything else was truly wonderful. Exactly what I needed. And it makes me want to like sink my teeth into more of the more, more of the more, did you like that? <laughs> It made me want to sink my teeth into more fantasy novels on my shelf. This was a success. It was a success. It ended kind of on a cliffhanger. So I am looking forward to the sequel. There's like a really awesome rhythm to it uh, that I really enjoyed. I read this so quickly. You could honestly like read this in a day if you had just a full day of reading. But I read it over two. It was just a lot of fun. I cannot wait to see what Hannah Kana does in the future. I am definitely going to be continuing this series. I think this is just a really great series. You know, it's a really great series. It's going to be fun. I cannot wait to see what happens in the sequel. I mean, I wish that I, I hope there's more of the gods because we don't necessarily see a lot of that happening. I want to know why certain things are the way they are. The world building is like it needs finessing, not gonna lie about that. Uh, but I think overall, it's just fun. It's fun. So that's all I wanted and I got it. Thank you to Hannah Kana. I am excited to read the sequel when it eventually comes out. But yeah, so that's that uh i don't know what other book will be coming in terms of like the library i have a few not a few i have one i have one book that i'm waiting for that i'm anticipating so much to read for this year it's sorry bro and it's a queer romance sapphic romance specifically i can't wait for that book to come into my hands but it's on order and I don't know why, but when libraries have books on order, it takes really long. And I wonder if it's because they have to, they're getting it from like a warehouse or something. I don't know how it works. If you're a librarian, can you let me know? Because it's really fascinating to me. Because like in, in my head, it's like, well, just order it online. <laughs> and it comes quickly. How, how, how slow can it be? But I think obviously because they source their books in a variety of different ways. So I've been waiting for that book since it came out. The library has had it on order since before it came out because I requested for them to purchase it. And they did, which I'm very, very thankful for because I'm spending the library's money and not my own. Uh, I do want to read a book for this series, but I don't know if I'm going to put it on in this vlog because this is going to be a series that is going to continue on my channel throughout the year reading my most anticipated books of 2023 when I can source them and I do want to read one but this it's so huge and my TBR for this month is quite full so I think I'm gonna be leaving that for a future video yeah okay I'm back in my mum's room because it has the best light and also because she's in a meeting and I can't film in my room because then you can hear her <laughs> Hi everyone. So 
I have read God Killer and Lost in the Moment and Found, which were two books that were actually like one of my most anticipated books of the year. I have an entire video about those books, but I also just have books that didn't make that video because I didn't know they existed until I posted that video. So if you look on my like 2023 watch list shelf on Goodreads, I constantly am updating it. And so this book came into my life very recently and it was one that I uh, didn't know was coming out until after I posted my original 2023 anticipated releases video. And it's this one. It's The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. And I have like the most gorgeous edition of it. It's from Fairy Loot, like honestly. And I started reading this. Like I'm reading this because I just had uh, this yearning <laughs> for fantasy, but I wasn't sure what kind of fantasy. And this was literally just staring at me. So I picked it up. A hundred pages in. I'm obsessed. I love this book. What is it about? It's about Amina Al Sarafi, who is a badass. I love her so much. So, sorry. <laughs> I need to be articulate. I need to be articulate. She is a woman in her 40s. She has a daughter named Majana. She also used to be uh, a pirate captain. And her legend is known everywhere. People are terrified of her and she's also wanted by various people. So for the past 10 years, she's been in hiding with her daughter and her family. But then she gets a job offer that she can't really refuse because of various motivations, but mainly so that her family and her daughter will be set for life. And it's just fantastic. Like, I didn't realise, I can't obviously, I'm not in the meat of the story yet because it is quite a thick book. So I've only really now gone to the point where um, Amina is organising things to go and do this job that she was offered. <laughs> and so the way that this story is told is Amina is talking is essentially being interviewed by a scribe who is writing down her story. And I love I love that. Like if you've read um what's that word? What's that book? Empire Empire of Vampires. The J. Christoph one. J. Christoph wishes <laughs> he could write like this. As in like this all very, very natural way that the narrator is talking to the interviewer. And you don't really necessarily have the interviewer's dialogue back to Amina. It's just Amina talking, but there are interjections where Amina will be talking to the scribe and it's the most hilarious thing. Let me just show you an example because you can, you can kind of imply the dialogue. So these like the M dash, so it's with a hastily scribbled note informing Salima I would meet her in Aiden after. Wait, is that a map? What are you doing with a map? I already told you I wasn't sharing the name of my next port of call. For a better understanding of geography. Have you lost your wits, Jamal? So Jamal is the scribe. It's just so funny and wonderful and kind of positions this underlying layer of like comedy and just fun. I love it so much. So I wanted to say something else about Amina. I think why I'm enjoying this book so much is because I don't think I've read, have I? I don't think I've read a fantasy novel from the perspective of a woman who's lived a life. Like she's in her forties, she has a daughter, she's had multiple marriages, like she's just living and she has regrets and she has guilt and shame about certain decisions that she's made in the past. and but she's also trying to be better, but then, oh, I just love her so much. I love Amina's character so much. I love it so much. I just love everything about this book right now. And I really hope that it keeps the momentum. I've never read Shannon Chakraborty before. I never knew if like the City of Brass series, the Diva Bad, Diva, 
what's the series called? The Dave Bad Trilogy. I never thought if like that would be my vibe, but this is definitely my vibe. This is absolutely wonderful. And I just don't know like where it's gonna go. I just don't understand. I don't know where it's gonna go. Also, look at these end pages. Truly, that's Amina. She is so gorgeous. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's like gold foil. It's so pretty. So it's set in like a fantasy, I'd say maybe like, uh, kind of historical fantasy. So it takes place within a historical context and they refer to, would it be like the medieval period, ancient period? We wanted to say medieval period. And so you kind of get commentary on things that are happening like colonialization and invasion, but like as it's happening because of the Franks in the North. So it's just really interesting. And there's also been some commentary uh, and exploration of being an older woman and what that means in a patriarchal society. It's just been really, truly a wonderful ride. So I'm hoping this continues. And I think there's going to be more about the octopus or like a giant squid or whatever, because there's so, like you have the tentacles here and you have an octopus there. I'm guessing things are gonna Happen with that because we do have uh, like demons and supernatural creatures that are very much a part of the not only mythology of the people but also just they exist and this is really interesting <laughs> and I'm pretty sure Amina has had some interactions with a god in the past so I'm I'm really excited um, I, all I want to do is read but I have to do stuff and uh, my thesis and I just want to sit down and read this book because Amina is a unique character and I really love listening to her narration and, and being with her so I most likely won't update you until a bit further on but oh my lord I'm having the best time I'm having the best time so is there anything else I wanted to talk about? I made a list, a mental list in my mind, which is what a mental list is, <laughs> last night and now I've completely forgotten because you know why? You know, I didn't write it down, okay? Why do I always say to myself, oh, I'll mentally make notes and it never works because I, my brain is a sieve, sieve. It just, everything disappears. Everything disappears. So I think that's all I wanted to say. Oh. One of the side characters we got introduced to is the Mistress of Poisons. Her name is Delilah and she is incredible. Oh, love it. And we got introduced to one more character named Timbu, who I think was the first mate. Is that a terminology that makes sense? Back when Amina was the captain I just I feel like shit's gonna go down it's gonna be wild I'm so excited I just really am having a lot of fun with this book okay and I wanted a light not really light but I wanted a fun fantasy that is fast-paced and interesting and that is definitely what this book is giving so I'm gonna end this clip now and we're back in my mum's room <laughs> I finished the adventures of Amina al-Sarafi loved it four and a half stars I don't know what I can say without it being a spoiler because I'm trying to make this vlog spoilerish free but let's just say everything that I said in the clip that you just saw I stand by like the job that Amina is essentially blackmailed into doing doesn't turn out the way that she expects it to be it's not the most easiest of jobs we have a man who is essentially the villain of the story, who is partaking in things that a human should not be partaking in, okay? 
we're talking like the dark underbelly of of these fantastical creatures okay it's, it's literally the underworld very fascinating um there was such casual and awesome queer rep and trans rep that I'm not going to talk about because it would be a huge spoiler. So you just have to read it. I, I, uh, this was just a joy to read. My feelings didn't change at all. Like it's going to be a very quick clip because this was awesome. This was awesome. The world building is not spectacular, but the characters are and the wild ride that this book was like this adventure it was truly an adventure so yeah loved it i can't wait to see what shannon chakraborty does in the future for this series so i'll be looking forward to that uh and that's that's it for the for this vlog this is going to be episode one of reading my most anticipated releases thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here with me I hope you have an amazing afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, friends.